Welcome to calculus class. Today we're going to cover integration by parts. This is one of my favorite techniques of integration. And I'm going to give you the formula for it, where it comes from, and then we're going to apply it to a few examples. And I'm going to tell you what's good choices and bad choices to make. Uh, it's going to feel a little like U substitution, but it's not quite the same. So let's go ahead and write down the product rule. So if you just take the derivative of f of x times g of x, you get f prime of x times regular g of x plus uh, regular f of x times g prime of x. All right, so seen that before. What I'm going to do is integrate both sides of this equation. So we agree this is true. Let's take an integral of both sides. So I'm going to integrate, integrate, and they're both a dx integral. Uh, I will write the little dx right there. Integral, this should be wrapped in parentheses dx right there. All right, next line. Uh, let's split the integral over the sum right here. So we get integral f prime x gx dx plus integral fx g prime x dx. And that equals, all right, what's happening on the left side? We can definitely do something here. Well, we have an integral of a derivative and they're gonna cancel out. So we're going to just get, let's see f of x times g of x. All right, so we are going to solve for the integral with the f prime. So I'm just gonna subtract this integral to the other side. So we have f of x times g of x minus integral f x g prime of x dx equals integral f prime x g of x dx. All right, in this form, this is integration by parts. I'm gonna use some slightly different uh, notation. We're gonna use some uh, u and v for the different functions. It'll just make this more compact on your formula page. So this is integration by parts. You can put a box around this, but I want to put a slightly more compact version down uh, for your formula page. So I'm going to call f, I'm going to call f of x will be u, g of x will be v. So we have u times v minus integral. So f is u, g prime is v prime dx equals integral. Over here, we have u prime v dx. <clears throat> so we can simplify this down even a little more. Let's just not even write the dx down. And then that will be the uh, integration by parts. Oops, I've already messed up. I do. I should be a little more careful with my substitution. So let me just actually write down what u equals. So I'm going to let u equal f of x, and v is g of x, as was said earlier. But it'd be a little bit careful with the derivatives. So du equals f prime x dx, and this was just like we were making u substitution, and we would have done these. Uh, now, because I let u, uh, v equal g of x, that means dv is equal to g prime x dx. So again, this is just like what we did in u sub, except we're doing it with a second function. And now I'll be a little bit more careful about writing this out. So the first fx times gx, that's definitely u times v. That's no problem. Now I want to be a little bit more careful about this integral here. So we definitely have f of x, which is the u. So we got that. Now let's be a little bit more careful about the rest of this. 
So we have g prime x dx, that whole thing, g prime x dx, is dv. So all of this right here is going to become just u dv. And it's important to remember dv is one thing. It's not d. D is not separate from v. It's one thing. Now on the right side, we have uh, f prime x dx. All of that is du. So we got integral. We don't normally write it du times v. We like to write it the other way around. So I'm going to write it as v times du. OK. So let's write this just with this integral on the left. So I'm just going to flip around the sides of the equation. Integral v du equals, and make sure your u's don't look like your v's, or you're going to be in trouble, u times v minus integral u dv. A little extra space so that we make sure that u is one thing and dv is uh, one other thing. Like you don't want to space it out u dv like that, because then it looks like u v is one thing and v is another. It's not how it is. It's u is one thing and dv is one other thing. OK, this is what I want on your formula page right here. How we're going to actually treat this and, and why is this neat? Let's look, first of all, why is this cool? The original integral here, what's happening, you're trying to integrate. So you're going to start here with integral v du. And if you look on the right side, you actually don't have an integral of v anymore. So we're going to pick, we're going to pick v, and then and then everything else will be du. And what happens on the right side? We never actually integrate v. We compute the derivative of v, and we integrate du. So what integration by parts gives us, right, it's just int by parts, lets us do two things. We actually, we never integrate v. Or maybe it's better to say we avoid We avoid integrating v uh, and instead take a derivative. So instead of instead take v prime. And also we choose we everything else is du. So the price we have to pay, we have to integrate. du. So hopefully all this will make sense in the examples that we're going to do. So it's going to feel like integration by parts because you're going to start with all these problems are going to start with let v equal uh, whatever you want, something. And then everything else, we're going to let du equal everything else. And then we'll go through and apply the formula. OK. So just like most of my lectures, I try to start with an easy example so that it's a bit more obvious. And then we'll slowly crank up the difficulty. All right, first up, we're going to integrate. This is probably one of the most obvious ones to start with. So we're going to integrate x times cos x dx. And of course, we're using integration by parts. So we're going to pick v and let everything else equal du. All right, so there's two main choices. I either let v equal x or cos x. All right. I think we may run out of room a little bit here. So let me just divide like this. All right. So if 
if I let V equal X, let me, so that is X, everything else is DU. So DU is cos X DX. And if I let V equal cos X, everything else is X. Let me erase this. If I let V equal cos X, everything else, X DX is, U, is DU. All right, so there's two ways to break this down. Either I let V, uh, v equal X or I let V equal cos X. I would not want to let V equal X cos X because the first thing you're going to do is take a derivative and that's going to give you a product rule and your derivative is going to get very complicated. So let's avoid that. All right, once, once we make this choice, we then have to compute DV and regular U. Okay, so you got V equals X. So we have DV, we've done this before, the derivative of uh, V, so what's the derivative of x is one, but it's one dx. All right, now the du, everything else. So we need to find u and we integrate the equation right above. Integral du equals integral cos x dx. So what's the integral antiderivative of du? Remember you could write as antiderivative of one du. So that's just regular u. On the right side, antiderivative of cosine is sine. There is a plus c. However, we can wait until the very end to write the plus c. So I recommend don't write the plus c here. So you're gonna, uh, we're gonna save this to the end. So let's, let's just forget about that plus c for now. Okay, so if we use this, we have our integral x cos x dx is equal to integral x is v times du. So I'm just rewriting it in terms of the substitutions that we made. And now I am going to apply the uh, integration by parts formula. So applying what's in here. So we start with the left UD, uh, V D U and it equals U V minus integral V D U. Nope. U D V. Yes. All right. So let's write down what this is U V. We now have u v, v is x, u is sine x. So we have x sine x minus integral u, which is sine x, dv is dx. And antiderivative of sine is cosine, except as a positive or negative. I'll just guess and check. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I actually want this to be a plus cos x. All right, I'm gonna write the left side, the original side down here, integral x cos x dx equals this. Now is where I add my constant. So once I'm done integrating, that's when I'll put the constant down. So I could think the constant was basically hiding in this integral. And then when I finish that integral, that's when I write the plus C. All right, so this is it right here. This is our answer. How can you check? Take derivative of the right side. All right, remember the derivative, when you take the derivative of this, x sine x, use the product rule. That plus C doesn't matter, we take a derivative. So we have, uh, product rule in the first part. So we have derivative x is one times sine x plus x derivative of sine is cos x plus derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then 
derivative constant is zero, it disappears. And we have sine x minus sine x cancels. And we have x cos x. And that is what we started with. So we're done right here. Uh, the checking is optional, but again, I've told you over and over, it takes way more time to get an antiderivative than it does to check if your antiderivative is correct by taking a derivative. All right, so this is how to use integration by parts. Now I'm going to talk about how to know you made a good choice for u and dv. Oops. Sorry, how to make a good I know you made a good choice of v and du. All right, let's go on the other side, the other options, and I'm going to show you why these are bad choices. We can still do all this. Uh, I'm going to write in orange here. All right, so we let v equal cos x. There's no problem to doing this. Everything I'm writing in orange is correct, but you're going to see that it's unhelpful and it's going to take us in the wrong direction. All right, so v is cos x. That means dv, derivative of cosine, is negative sine x dx. So derivative of cosine is negative sine, and make sure you have your dx there. All right, how do I find u? I anti-differentiate, so integral d, du equals integral x dx. Now, I can tell my u and my v apart because my u always has that little foot and my V does not. However, my V does also does not have a sharp point. So if your V is much sharper than mine, you can probably just use the shape of the letters to tell the difference. But right now you wanna make sure that whatever font you're writing in, your U does not look like your V or you're gonna have serious problems. All right, integral DU is just U. Right side, we have X squared times a half uh, there's no dx. You don't need the plus constant here. Okay, so why is this worse? Well, we will go ahead and plug this in, but you can, I can already tell what happened here. dv is fine. Cosine turned to negative sine, no problem. But what happened with u is when we took the antiderivative of du to get u, this function used to be x to the first power is now x squared. So it actually got more complicated. And that's the reason it's a bad choice. So I'll write in red. This got more complicated. I really can't write. Which is bad. All right, let's uh, look at what happened before. Oh, looks like one note's having a problem. Let's stop it and restart it. All right, what you're going to see is that in our choice that led to the, where we wanted to go, right here, it actually got more simple, not more complicated. So we let V equal X and then DV became one DX. So that got more simple. Which is good. All right, so let's keep going down the more complicated road and we'll see what we get. So we have integral x cos x dx equals integral uh, b du equals, and I'm writing down the choices we made on the right side here. Uh, well, let me write down the uv minus integral u dv. All right, so we got u times v. So u is 1 half x squared. u times v, so v is cos x. So far, so good. You can already see the comp, uh, complexity creeping in, but this is where it's going to be uh, much worse. We have integral u dv. So u is 1 half x squared. 
dv is negative sine x dx. And that negative, uh, I'll just turn the minus into a plus. All right, so this is all, it's all equal, totally fine. Everything I wrote down is true, it's just not good. Uh, so where's the real problem? The real problem is we still have an integral and it still mixes some x's with a sine, but it mixes x squared with sine x. So this is where it got worse. This integral is worse than the original. Okay. So now, hopefully, if you make a bad choice, you'll notice that you're gaining complexity, and that's how you know your choice is bad, and you can rewind and make a different choice. Uh, no shame is starting over. Totally okay. You may go down a road and realize you made the wrong choice, which is the first thing that you did, and you're going to have to rewind and do it again. And that's just something that's going to happen in this section. All right. Our next example. It's going to look deceptively easy, and I'm pretty sure I've already told you this antiderivative. All right, antiderivative of ln x dx. First of all, it's not 1 over x plus c. Uh, if you think it is, you're thinking about the derivative of natural log. The derivative of ln is 1 over x. So let's, let's write that down. All right, we know the derivative of natural log. We, unless I've told you the antiderivative of ln x, but I haven't shown you why it's true. So let's not use what I already told you and write down what this is. Let's instead use things that we know and integration by parts. So I know the I can get the derivative of ln. So what does that mean? I'm going to choose ln x, I know how to take a derivative. So I'm back to where we started. If you can take a derivative uh, of something and that's nice, you want that to equal v. So I'm choosing v to be ln x. And this is good because I, I know how to find dv. So it's good because we know the derivative of ln x. All right. So v is ln x. Everything else is du. So du is everything else, which in this case is just dx. So we need to anti-differentiate here. So integral du equals integral dx. That means u equals x. And up here, v is ln x, so dv is 1 over x dx. OK. This is integral v du, which is uv minus integral u dv. So uv is x ln x minus integral u, which is u is regular x, dv is 1 over x dx. So that's u dv. And notice the x 1 over x cancels, very nice. So this is integral just dx or 1 dx. And antiderivative of 1 is x, so it's minus x plus d. And that right there is the antiderivative of ln x. And just in case that's not in your notes or on your cheat sheet, you of course can use integration by parts and compute it, but it's probably a good idea to have the 
ln u du is u times ln u minus u plus c. So you may want to have the uh, antiderivative natural log written on your cheat sheet in case it's not there. Okay, so that was kind of a weird one. There was only really one function inside. Uh, the other function was really just one dx. Uh, I could have written one dx and integral one dx. So the other thing I chose was just one dx. That's kind of strange. All right, next up, integral x squared e to the x dx. All right, I'm going to choose, a, I'm going to make a bad choice, and then I'm going to talk about why it's a bad choice. So I'm going to let v equal e to the x, and then everything else is du, which is x squared dx. And then dv, derivative e to the x is e to the x, and you get your dx. So we have du. I'm going to integrate both sides. Integral du is integral x squared dx. So u equals one third x cubed. All right. So what happened here? And I'll write this in red. Everything's correct. You know, Comment on why it's bad in orange. All right, this got more, uh, no, it didn't get more complicated, but it is not any more simple, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if we look over here, we gained complexity. This is more complex, which is almost always a bad sign. All right, so we're going to make the opposite choices. So choose B differently. All right, let's go ahead. We're not going to use any of that stuff. All right, choose B differently. All right, let, and this is, that's exactly where you should turn around. If you uh, make a choice for U, uh, B and DU, and then you get dv and u, and things get worse on either of the two, you probably made a bad choice. So that's where you should stop. You just notice things got more complicated, and I'd recommend start over right there. All right, so now I'm going to let v equal x squared. Right away, you should be thinking, well, we're going to need to take dv, take the derivative. So x squared is going to basically become x to the first. It's going to be 2x to the first, but we're losing a power of x. Things are getting more full, and that's good. So that is the intuition you should start to have. And it may not happen until a few problems in on the homework. So let v equal x squared. du is everything else, which is e to the x dx. All right, dv is now 2x dx. So on the right side, I'm going to integrate in just one step. So if du is e to the x dx, regular u is e to the x. You can always check. Just take derivative right here, apply the uh, d operator. So that means du equals the derivative e to the x, which is e to the x times dx. And that's exactly what we have above. All right, well, let's go ahead and make all this substitution. So this is V du, and this is UV minus integral U dV. Now you might think it's pointless to write this out. There's a few reasons I want you to write it out. Uh, one of them is, so you remember it a little bit more each time. The second reason is when I grade your final exam, if you use integration by parts and I see this written down, then I know that you're using integration by parts, even if you perform it incorrectly. Um, and it's also a signal to you that you performed integration by parts if you look back on your homework later. Of course, we're in the integration by parts section, so almost every question is going to use integration by parts, but in general, you really want to make sure it's obvious what steps you're taking, even if it's just your own uh, homework solution that you're writing out.
Okay, so make our subs. So we got u v, which is x squared e to the x minus integral u, which is e to the x dv is 2x dx. I'll just bring that two out front integral and I'll, I like writing my x in front of the e to the x. So it's x times e to the x dx. All right, how does this compare with the original? The original was x squared e to the x dx. That was the original. So we took an x squared power down to x to the first power. That's good. However, I don't know the antiderivative of this yet. How can we find the antiderivative of this? Doesn't look like anyone that we know. You can try a u sub, but I can tell you right now, if u equal u equals x is useless because it just changes all the variables. And if you let u equal e to the x, your derivative is e to the x. So u sub won't work here. The integral we're looking at is really similar to the original. And how? Do, what was our way to simplify the original integral? We applied integration by parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply integration by parts again. All right. We used u and v. We're going to reuse the letters u and v. If you notice, this line right here, it's got no u's and v's in it. So we're OK. It's OK to reuse these letters. So I'm going to let, unlike in a u sub, once you make a u sub, everything is written out in u's. So you can't reuse the letter u. That's why after a u sub, I say make a w sub. I hope you don't have to make a third u sub, but I'd probably go with v as the next letter. Uh, but we, you don't have that problem with integration by parts because again, u and the v disappear very quickly. All right, so we're gonna let v equal something. So we have two choices. V is either X or E to the X. And I think after you saw what happened earlier, you want V to be something that has a derivative that's nice. So V is going to equal X because the derivative will be one. And that means that everything else is DU, which is E to the X DX. So then DV is equal to one DX and regular U is E to the X. So I'm going to rewrite it as v du. And then I'm going to apply the int by parts, integration by parts. So this is uv minus integral uh, u dv. Again, I'm not substituting anything outside the integral. So I'm not, not trying to apply, turn this x squared e to the x into anything else. It's just staying as it is. So we have minus two and uv. So we got e to the x times x minus integral of u, which is e to the x dv is just now finally dx. So in here, we can absolutely now take the antiderivative. This is super easy. So derivative e to the x is antiderivative e to the x is e to the x. So is a derivative. All right, we did our last antiderivative. So now the plus c shows up. So we have x squared e to the x. I'm distributing the negative two. So we have minus two x e to the x plus two e to the x plus c. Okay, that is the antiderivative. You can check and what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a product rule here. And one of the terms is the one that you want. So the other term is not one that you want. And when you do the product rule here, you'll find that that extra term that you got cancels out something here, but you'll get an extra term and the derivative of this will cancel out the extra term that you get.
So I do strongly encourage you to take the derivative of this and you'll see the cancellation happening. But for this lecture, we will leave it like this. Okay. Next example, integral e to the x cos x dx. All right, this one actually, I believe will be the hardest one that we're going to do. So why is this difficult? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. So in terms of e to the x, it doesn't matter if e to the x is v or du. Now, cos x, derivative of cos x is negative sine. Antiderivative of cos x is regular sine. So again, it doesn't matter if cosine, if you're taking a derivative or antiderivative in terms of complexity. That means there's a huge amount of ambiguity. It do, in this one, it doesn't matter which one you choose because the complexity is not going to be reduced. We're in the integration by parts section. So this question can be solved by integration by parts. This one's gonna be super tricky and I won't put a question like this on the final. And um, it's hard to explain what's gonna happen until we just get into it. All right, I'm going to let uh, V equal, I'll just arbitrarily choose E to the X. I absolutely could have gone with uh, cos X and I encourage you to, after we get through this example, stop the video, make the opposite choices and repeat a similar process and you should get to the same result. So V is E to the X, DU is everything else. So we have DV is e to the x dx and regular u is sine x. Uh, again, I just took a guess at the antiderivative and then I checked it. The derivative of sine is cosine, so we are good to go there. Okay, so this is integral u, which is uv minus integral u dv. So we have e to the x sine x minus integral u, which is sine x, e to the x dx. Okay. Remember, we started with antiderivative e to the x cos x dx. All right. Our antiderivative. It's not identical to our original antiderivative, but it kind of is. Uh, it's an x is e to the x times sine instead of times cosine. Good news is we did not gain complexity in the antiderivative, but the bad news is we did not lose any complexity. All right. What in the world to do next? Well, this looks kind of like what we started with. So let's do another integration by parts and I'm gonna choose very similar V and DU. So I'm gonna let V equal E to the X. This time DU is sine X DX. I'm leaving the negative sign out front. So in the next step, it's going to be minus, just like I did on the previous problem. Uh, dv is e to the x dx. Regular u is cos x, except derivative of cosine is negative sine. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. All right. So we got uv minus integral u dv so uv is negative e to the x cos x negative e to the x cos x minus integral u which is negative 
cos x dv e to the x dx. All right, let's distribute. And I'm just going to keep writing down, write down the original on the left. Integral e to the x cos x dx equals e to the x sine x. All right, distribute the negative inside here. So we have plus e to the x cos x. Now this antiderivative, it's two negatives here canceling, but we get an extra negative here. So it's still minus integral e to the x cos x dx. All right. Why is this good? Our integral never got more complicated. Yes, the equation got more complicated. There's more stuff, but the integral never got more complicated. And our integral is now the same as it is on that side, except it's minus on one side. So I'm going to do something kind of weird. I'm going to solve for integral e to the x cos x dx. And how do we do that? We're going to add this integral to both sides. So that gives us two of these integrals equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cos x. Uh, now is when I'm going to put my plus constant in here. Uh, I know I just did an algebra move and not a calculus move, um, but I was thinking it was in here. But now that I've combined them into a single antiderivative, I got to write the plus C. Now, we're not quite done. How do we get the two out of here? We multiply both sides by a half. And you absolutely can factor out e to the x. Uh, you could divide your constant by two, but you're just going to get a new constant, so it's not worth it. All right, there we go. That is it. And again, this was a bit more complicated than a question I put on your final because you had to do some really funky algebra that I just wrote up in the light blue marker where we solved for the antiderivative. And that was kind of strange. Okay. So we only have two more questions to go. We're going to do one more uh, indefinite integral without endpoints, and then we'll do one with endpoints at the very end. And what we're going to do is we're going to express an integral of cos to a higher power of an nth power. In, low, in terms of lower powers. Or cos or sine. All right, so how are we going to do this? What we're going to do is let u equal Cos to the n minus one x and dv. Whoa. I just realized you'll be okay for your notes. But most sources you look at, they switch the role of u and v. So just keep that in mind, including my notes are switching the role of u and v, but uh, my paper notes that I'm looking at. However, all the notes we've done in this video have been consistently wrong on my letters, so we're okay. All right, until this very second. All right, so let v equal cos n minus 1x. So that means everything left over 
So what is left over? I'm just ripping out one cosine function. So it's instead of cos to the n, it's cos to the n minus one. So du is cos x dx. So anti-differentiate to get regular u. So regular u is sine x. So we have v dv is, we have a power rule. So we have, and it's probably better we're going to do calculus to write the power out like this. So you're draw, you're multiplying by the original power times cosine x to the n minus two power times the chain rule derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative n minus one times sine x times cos to the n minus two x, and that's dv. Okay, so we have integral v du equals uv minus integral u dv. All right, uv is sine x times cos n minus one x minus the integral of u, which is sine x, dv, which is all this ugly stuff here. So the negative will cancel that negative sign there. n minus one times another sine x times cos n minus two x dx. I feel like this got a lot uglier. U sine x dv. I'm worried, I don't think we should have a sine squared in here. All right, this one's really annoying. I won't, I don't think there's any homework problems like this. So let's not worry about this one. Okay, so last up, we're gonna do definite integration by parts, which is where you have an A and a B endpoint. Oh, before example, let me give you the formula. You probably won't need to write this one down because at least when I see it, it feels very much, uh, very intuitive. So we had V D U equals, so we have U V. Now we're gonna plug in A and B, just like we did every time we get an antiderivative with endpoints, minus integral, again, A to B of V, uh, U D V. So you're just plugging in uh, A and B and subtracting like you always do. One example here, zero to four, x e to the negative x dx. All right, we did a pretty similar problem earlier. All right, so when it comes to choices, there's either x or e to the negative x. Now, which one should be v? 
it should be the choice that has a better derivative because we're about to take a derivative and get dv next. And when we pick du, we're gonna take an antiderivative. So what are some good choices here? I wanna take a derivative of x. So you let v equal x, everything else is du. And that means dv is one dx and regular u is, it's e to the negative x, but there's a chain rule that happens. So it's negative e to the negative x, or you could write it as times negative one. So u is negative e to the negative x. All right. So we have integral zero four v du equals u v zero to four minus integral zero to four of u dv. All right. So u v is negative x e to the negative x from zero to four minus integral u is negative e to the negative x. So that negative cancels that negative sign. Uh, dv is just dx, again, zero to four. I'll plug in the zero and the four for both of these at the same time. So let's get this antiderivative. It's gonna be negative e to the negative x from zero to four. All right, all we're doing is plugging in endpoints. Now, if you notice the endpoints are the same, so you, I don't usually do this. You could factor out the endpoints, um, but I'm just gonna apply them separately. So I'm gonna plug in four first. We have negative four e to the negative four minus negative zero. Because when you plug in zero to x, you get zero. All right, so that covers the first one. Now there's a minus. That's all in the first one. The second one, we plug in four first. So it's e to the negative four. And I'm treating the negative like this. So it's negative outside all this. So it's e to the negative four minus e to the negative zero, which is not zero, uh, but e to the zero is one. So negative four e to the negative four, that zero doesn't matter minus e to the negative four plus one because it's minus a negative one so it's a plus one i think it's about best we if you really want your first turn to be positive could factor out e to the negative four if you want to but i think this is good enough for us right here okay so that is definite integration uh, by parts All right, you do need lots of practice. It's not gonna, at first it won't be obvious which uh, problems need integration by parts when you are on your final exam. And you're just gonna have to keep in mind, there's gonna be a few more tools. So we have for techniques of integration, we have U sub, which we did a long time ago. We have integration by parts. I think the next two sections that we do next week will be more techniques. And one of them is trig substitution, which is going to feel a lot like a U sub, except it's slightly different, but it's going to feel similar. And then integration by parts, which is some fun algebra that we'll get into. Uh, and by fun, I mean it's fractions. Um, and I'll show you how to solve a linear system using matrices. Uh, so that'll be cool. And that's all next week.